Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of me oversharing about the weird things that happen in my life. Today we're going to talk about metabolic myopathies, which are rare genetic diseases that affect metabolism. And metabolism is not how many calories you burned a minute. Um, it is actually the process through which the body's cells convert fuel into usable energy. So people with metabolic myopathies lack certain enzymes involved in providing energy that helps the muscles. Hmm. Specifically, I want to talk about, and please bear with me with the pronunciation, um, adenosine monophosphate deaminase deficiency type 1 or AMPD1 for short. There are many, many other names. Well, I think it used to be called MAD deficiency, MADA deficiency, muscle AMP deaminase deficiency, myodenylate deaminase deficiency, AMP deaminase deficiency, um, yep, we already said the long one, muscle AMP deaminase deficiency, myodenylate deaminase, okay, all right, all right, we can stop there. Basically, it is exercise-induced myopathy. As always, disclaimer, you guys know that I'm not an expert, I'm not a medical professional or a licensed anything, so please just take this for entertainment purposes and as my personal story, and I will cite the sources that I used below. Starting with Wikipedia, um, which according to it, AMPD type 1 is a human metabolic disorder in which the body consistently lacks it, the enzyme AMP deaminase in sufficient quantities. This may result in exercise intolerance, muscle pain, and muscle cramping. During the pandemic, yes, dark times, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but I strongly suspect that I have AMPD1 deficiency. I haven't taken a test to confirm this, uh, as I couldn't find a doctor near me that does the forearm ischemic exercise test or FIET, which according to the another resource I used on PubMed um, by RJ Taylor, Lieberman and Portwood is a test, is a clinical tool for the evaluation of patients suspected to have a metabolic disorder of muscle function. Why do I think that I have that weird genetic disorder instead of a simpler explanation of fibromyalgia? Well, for me, the symptoms were really progressive over my lifetime, whereas I know that fibromyalgia isn't a progressive disease. I mean, you can have flare-ups, definitely, but then you're supposed to go back to a normal and have those um, physical symptoms go away uh, for a little while. So there's triggers, there's, there's other things, the way that it works. But for me, every time I exercise, there's always, always, like these horrible consequences that I didn't always have, especially when I was younger, I didn't have these symptoms. So I didn't really notice it. I used to do boot camp, I used to do spinning every day. Like I got tired, but it was, and sore, of course, but it was never debilitating and it never really interrupted my life. However, after I got into my mid twenties and things like that, I wasn't able to keep up with as many classes and mid 20s is still young guys like you're not like dying in mid 20s so I should have been able to keep up with the classes um, I did notice that I would get really sleepy right away like right after a class I would have to take a three-hour nap or something um, and a year into like spinning when I started noticing the tiredness um, and the sleepiness a year after that, um, I had a horrible lower back spasm that I had to quit spinning. I mean, I went to the ER, not the ER, I'm sorry, I went to urgent care and the doctor there was like, yeah, yeah, you need to take pen, pain meds, you need to lay off the bike, like, whatever you did, it's a bad injury, like, I, uh, it was hard to even sit. Um, and I, I just didn't understand because I didn't do anything different. I mean, to this day, I still have to sit cross-legged on a chair because if not it feels like my legs are hanging off and like pulling on those muscles and it just hurts years after that again during, during pandemic um i took up aerial yoga and um i loved it i absolutely loved it i had a swing set in my my house and my patio and um i just thought that, that it was so much fun like doing the flips and the turns and everything 
Um, and I just went at my own pace. So I never realized that it was like a little bit slow, slow pace, I guess. Um, however, I practiced almost every single day. So I wondered, I, I just was sure that I could keep up with any in-person class. That's why I signed me up for an in-person class when things started to open up again. And I dragged my husband with me. After that class, I am not kidding, I am not lying, I had to lie on the couch for a week. I was so lucky that we were still remote because I couldn't drive anywhere. I just literally laid on the couch. Um, I got up to use the bathroom and things like that, but it was so painful that I was thankful that my husband was home too, so he could like bring me food and water because I was like, ugh, ugh, can I please have this, ugh and he would have to bring it for me. It was awful. I just couldn't believe it. I'd been practicing for months. What what happened? But the professor was there. She helped me through the movements. And at the time, I didn't feel any immediate, like I didn't feel an, an injury or a tear, you know? And another thing is I took my husband and he's not an active person. Like he, he would not work out even three times a week at this point. And he was fine. He was, he was a little sore but he, he could move, he could walk. He's like, after a day, back to normal. Then we took our trip to Japan, which I posted about. So if you guys wanna see those videos, check it out. We saw monkeys, we saw temples, real good food. Oh my God, it was amazing. Um, trip of a lifetime, really. But, and I wanted to enjoy it to the fullest. Um, and I thought I was gonna have the same stamina that I did the last big trip when I went to Russia with my husband and his family and I walked every day and I was fine. So if I'll have the same stamina, I'll be fine. Narrator, it was not fine. Um, in Russia, we walked every day for hours as you do when you're a tourist. In Japan, we tried to do the same thing. Um, I just didn't feel the soreness in Russia, but and, and mind you, in Japan, like right before the trip, I was a fairly active person. Um, I walked every single day, power walked, um, at least jogged a few times a week. Um, and when we got there, I am not kidding, I could not keep up. We were, I mean, regular tourists, walking most of the day. Obviously we took breaks in between, we ate, like it wasn't rushed or anything and to the point where I missed out on seeing some of the things that I wanted to see the entire trip like I I couldn't I had to stay a full day in the hotel in bed um, because the soreness the soreness was so bad and I know it sounds ridiculous to miss a trip or miss out on a trip because of soreness but it wasn't like oh I'm sore let's take a Tylenol like my glutes were burning like it felt like they were on fire i would sit and it would still hurt so much um i remember sitting at one of the cafes when it was so bad that i just started crying in public and the japanese people were like oh, what's wrong with her what's wrong with her you know because that just doesn't happen in japan i guess <sighs> so i felt bad i felt like i just wanted the pain to stop we went to an onsen and it was beautiful and I thought that the hot water would relieve the pain but it just made it angry <laughs> like it was like ah like I'm on fire I'm on literal fire and it's not good it's not not lit the only thing that seemed to help was an ice bath and the water in Japan bathtubs the temperature control is insane like you can go from like boiling hot to freezing it's amazing what they have i don't know what they do with the water pressure over there but um i had the ice bath and i jumped in and instantly i just felt the relief and i felt like smoke was coming out like steam <laughs> as my legs just cooled down and sizzled like <laughs> like finally calming down right if you guys know anything else that this might be please i'm happy to learn like this could be something else this is just what i strongly suspect um and this is my experience with it but i would love to hear comments or anything that you guys might think i don't think it's fully understood how ampd1 works um but again according to wikipedia um with this disorder fatigue and sedation after heavy exertion can be caused by an excess of adenosine in the cells. In the brain, this excess decreases alertness and causes sleepiness. 
And I did notice that first that, and even now when I do even half an hour of weightlifting, um, the next day I am extremely sleepy, which is ironic because I suffer from insomnia. Um, I don't even normally take naps. Like I cannot and have the most difficult time staying asleep throughout the night. But after a workout with weights, I cannot, I can't keep my eyes open. Like, um, the next three nights or whatever, I'll just fall asleep right as soon as I hit the bed. It's very like restless when I do sleep because even if I sleep that night, the next day I'm back to tired and it just feels like I'm sore, but I'm also like unfocused, and very foggy, which is why I think I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And that can go up to four a week after a single workout. Overall though, I don't think I'm too bothered by this metabolic disorder. It's not like my lifelong dream was to become an Olympic athlete or something. Um, but it is upsetting that when I work out with people like my mom or even people old enough to be my grandparents, um, I can't keep up. And I may have to really tone down my itinerary on any future trips. But other than that, I am glad that it's not fatal and it doesn't seem like it will harm my life too much. However, if you suspect you also have this metabolic disorder, please, please, please comment. I want to find others like me and let me know if there's anything that you found that works for you. I mean, like I found the ice baths. Um, sometimes ibuprofen can help. And I've even tried drinking a lot of caffeine. So a few cups of coffee, Red Bull, whatever, before a workout. That way, um, you know, it kind of prevents that sleepiness and a little bit of the pain too after the workout, which makes sense because um, I read online on, I believe it was acs.org and I'll cite the link below, the specific link, but I read that caffeine binds to adenosine receptors so that it blocks its ability to slow the nerve activity. So it kind of made sense. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.